Hello and welcome to microeconomics. Um, microeconomics is um, an aspect of economics that I'm super, super interested in um, because unlike macro that looks at sort of things in aggregate, so it looks at, you know, the whole government and the whole economy, um, microeconomics looks at um, the actions of individuals and firms. So why do people behave like they do? Why do people spend so much money on cars and, you know, forget that they don't have money to pay their rent? Um, why do um, companies um, decide to produce certain amounts of products? Um, why um, do companies stop producing or put a, um, decide to leave a market? Uh, these are the kind of um, questions that microeconomics answers. So in the first part of this course, I'll be doing a brief introduction to micro um, and talking about why it's so important. The second part, we'll be looking at um, theories of consumer behavior. So why do people consume? What's their motive um, for buying stuff? And what are the different um, theories around why people buy stuff? The third will be to do with firms. Why do firms produce goods and services? Why do they stop producing goods and services? And what are the incentives for producing those goods and services? And then the fourth will be around markets and competition. Um, what kind of markets exist in an economy or what kind of markets exist in a marketplace? What are their characteristics? Um, and what's the best kind of market for society? So, we're going to begin now. I hope you enjoy it. Introduction to micro. So um, on the introduction to micro, we'll be talking about um, demand and supply, market equilibrium, elasticity, um, what signaling and rationing is, uh, what equilibrium is, and um, what a surplus is, and what a shortage is. So what is microeconomics? Microeconomics studies the implications of human action and how those decisions affect utilization and the distribution of scarce resources. Microeconomics shows how and why different goods have different values, how individuals make more efficient or productive decisions, and how individuals best coordinate and cooperate with each other. So there's some definitions that I'm going to go through. Number one, efficiency. Number two, externalities. And number three, economic activities. And uh, the economic activities are production, consumption, distribution, and resource maintenance. So in terms of efficiency, efficiency is how to produce a uh, good with sort of the minimum amount of input, so um, how to use resources um, in the best way possible. Externalities are things that happen as a result um, of production that aren't included in the uh, final output. So things like waste products like smoke generated during the process of production um, that are non-market activities. And um, economic activities include production, that's um, the process of turning an input into an output, and the output can either be a good or a service. Um, consumption, which is the way we use those things in our households. Distribution, that's getting it to um, the consumer. And resource maintenance, how we um, sort of uh, sustain the uh, products that we're using to produce, um, how we process, sustain the raw materials. Um, so we're going to start with one of the most important laws of economics, the law of demand. The law of demand states that at higher price levels, um, there's a lower quantity demanded. And at lower price levels, there's a higher quantity demanded. Demand curves, so those graphs that you see, and demand schedules, the tables, are used to summarise the relationship between quantity demanded and price. 
Economists use the term demand to refer to the amount of some good or service that cost consumers are willing and able to purchase at any particular time at a particular price. Demand is based on needs and wants. A consumer may be able to differentiate between a need and a want, but from an economist's perspective, they're the same thing. Demand is also based on your ability to pay. So if you cannot pay in economics, you have no effective demand. And this is such an important point, um, I think, for Africa, where, um, for example, in the healthcare market, there's a lot of people that need healthcare services, but don't actually have the ability to pay for healthcare services. Um, so an economist would say that there's no effective demand. And this is the demand uh, supply curve. So you can see it at very high prices, right at the top corner, um, there's, um, there's limited uh, demand. Um, and as the price comes uh, lower, um, the quantity increases. So the quantity that people can buy or the quantity that uh, people can afford um, and desire, want, need increases. So um, there are two reasons why the demand, co um, the, the demand curve uh, slopes downwards. Uh, number one is the substitution effect and number two is the income effect. The income effect states that when the price of a good decreases, it is as if the buyer's income went up. That's the income effect. And then the substitution effect states that when the price of a good decreases, customers will substitute away from goods that are relatively more expensive um, to cheaper goods. The law of supply is the microeconomic law that states that all other factors being equal, as the price of a good or service increases, the quantity of goods and services that suppliers will offer will increase. So when the price of something is going up, more people actually want to get into the market. It becomes more appealing for more people to start the business because they know that they have a high price product, um, that they'll, um, they can, that they know that they have a product that is, um, they can sell at high prices. And um, the law of supply says that as the price of an item goes up, suppliers will attempt to maximize their product uh, profits by increasing the quantity offered for sale. So those are the two iron laws of microeconomics. Um, there's a third concept that you have to get to grips with to understand micro, and that's the concept of elasticity. Elasticity is a central concept in economics and it's applied in many, many situations. Basic demand and supply analysis explains um, sort of all the economic, regular economic variables such as uh, price, income and demand. Um, but um, elasticity can provide important information on the strength and weaknesses of such relationships. And I think that that's important as well. Um, what is the strength of the relationship between the consumer um, and the producer or the product? So elasticity refers to the responsiveness of one economic variable, such as quantity demanded, to another variable, such as price. And there are types of elasticity, each one uh, measuring the relationship between two economic variables. So there's price elasticity of demand, which measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in price. Um, there's price elasticity of supply, which measures the responsiveness of the quantity supplied to a change in price. There's cross elasticity of demand, which measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded of one good, say X, to the change um, in price of another, say the difference between Gary and Damala flour. Um, and the income elasticity of demand, which measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in consumer incomes. And I think that that's 
this concept of elasticity sorry before i go into rationing is again so so important in africa um because especially in nigeria where gdp per capita has been falling consistently um it's very very difficult to um target our goods if we don't understand how sensitive um, our consumers are to price um so obviously before we go into micro proper um we're going to have another set of definitions and um, one is rationing rationing um occurs whenever resources are particularly scarce and demand exceeds supply so prices are driven up and the effect of um, such a price rise is to discourage demand conserve resources and spread their use out over time price also has a, a signaling what people call a, a signaling effect so price changes send messages actually to consumers and producers about whether to end or um, end uh, um, end the business um, for the producers um, or whether to stop purchasing a particular good for the consumers so rising prices give a signal to consumers to either reduce demand or stop buying that thing completely um, whereas they give a signal to potential producers to enter a market so in COVID-19 for instance um, COVID has made a lot of people think more carefully about entering the healthcare business whereas before nobody was talking about healthcare as a business now the demand from um, especially from the public sector has gone up you see more people um, entering the business so I know guys in oil and gas for instance have suddenly produced medical equipment brochures and are selling PPE and stuff so you can see that um, rising prices give a signal to um, um, to producers or potential producers um, to enter a market whereas conversely falling prices give a positive message to consumers to enter a market but they give a negative signal to producers to leave the market and we can see you know rapidly rapidly falling oil and gas prices um, we don't know if this is a trend or if it's just because of covid because of the reduced demand but we know that companies are leaving the oil industry um, because the prices are falling too rapidly and a lot of companies can't hold on so that's really the um, signaling effect that price has 